Hey guys, welcome to Game Time Episode 9. Uh, last time I did, uh, I looked at D for the Sega Saturn. So this time, what better to look at than its sequel, Enemy Zero. Or its pseudo-sequel, Enemy Zero. So I'm going to kind of do what I did for this video. Uh, like my Overblood video, I'm going to play up to a certain point. And then I'm going to load up a save uh, close to the end at a really, really cool, tense part of this game. And, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm playing this game on beginner because this game is fucking hard. This game is really hard. Even on beginner, it's still pretty hard. So, if you don't know what, uh... Oh, sorry, the, the, uh, the intro is actually on disc zero. Shoot, I probably should have put that in, but, uh... <coughs> Ooh. Still got a little bit of a cold, so hopefully not much, much coughing this time. Um, but yeah, what we're just gonna start with this. All right, so the game has begun. Go over here, check out a uh, check out Laura's makeup, because even though this is in the middle of a crisis, she gotta look good for these aliens. All right, she she gotta make sure she still looks good. All right, so uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with Enemy Zero, it is a uh, Take the plot to the original alien, add more aliens, and make them invisible. That is this game. Yes, you have to fight invisible aliens with uh, only being able to tell where they are based on a piano chime, which is uh, coming from the device we just picked up and she put in her ear. It will uh, it will ding faster and at a either a higher or lower pitch depending on how far away and uh, what what direction they are in. So yes, um, yeah. So this is Enemy Zero. Uh, a alien and aliens are uh, aliens more specific. More specifically, it is my favorite movie of all time. That movie is fucking great. Great action. Great horror. It's uh, really a wonderful film. Uh, great uh, meaning behind it actually too. Or uh, yeah, something very cryptic. Sure, it has a meaning, but you know the the very uh, I can't remember. There, there was there butterfly in D like that. I think that's something that just kind of ties the series all together. But uh, anyways, yeah, aliens was actually uh, uh, supposed to symbolize like uh, our our attitudes toward towards Vietnam. Like, yeah, we're the fucking we're total badasses, but we go in and kind of get our asses handed to us a little bit. Whoa, Laura, turn around. All right, so yeah. Investigate her uh, her drawers over here, and we'll get the voice recorder. This is very very needed. It saves and loads your game. Now on beginner, uh, every you start with 99 battery life, and uh, it takes one battery life to uh, to charge. I mean to save and zero to load. Actually, it might take one to load, but if you're a uh, Sega Saturn. It's uh, set to uh, January 1st, 1994. <laughs> uh, you'll be able to load up and it won't cost you anything. Which is pretty cool. Very, uh, at least I think that's what I read. And if that is true, it saved my ass in this game a lot. Because, okay, I, I beat this game today, actually. I've been playing it for, I don't know, three or four days. I've been having to take breaks because it is a... I think this game can be beaten in probably like three hours, maybe a little over. Oh, excuse me, it worked. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Hell yeah, I do. Because I was taking too long. hear me. This is Captain Romney. Things are probably rather confusing for you at the moment, since you were jolted out of hyperspeed. It seems that something is happening on the ship. I want to discuss this with you immediately, so call me on the video phone. Is that not what I'm doing? Oh right, yeah, I've, I've never had that happen to before. I usually call him and he says something different. 
Laura, have you attempted going to the locker room? Your key should open the door. Go check it out. So, yep. I didn't know that happened. But, uh, yeah, let's try and call everybody. Ronnie seems... Uh, Captain Ron? <laughs> Captain Ron seems to be doing fine. Uh-oh, George is refusing connection. But our boy David. Nope, connection refused. Kimberly, she has a lock code, or a passcode. You can't talk to her. Marcus, let's see. Network error, number 27. Uh, let's see uh, let's see how Parker's doing since the intro. Oh no! Uh, Parker's seen better days. So yeah, if you've seen the intro, he dies immediately. He's black. Let's not let's not make this racist. No, but uh, Kimberly's black, and she's a very important character in this game. So yeah, that's uh, that's everybody. Also, you can go to information and get the maps. I have uh, I've taken pictures of the maps of this floor. So I got them on my iPad here. I've actually got my laptop over here with uh, the FAC on it. The walkthrough. Alright, so I believe we can leave. Alright. Let's go. And we want to go to the locker room. Alright, so the locker room. is <clears throat> Attention, attention. This ship's emergency mode has now been activated. I think this uh Yeah, it's the elevator right there on the, on the right. We want to go off this way. All right. This is the locker room. Yeah, there's there's actually a map for this floor. One reason that makes this game extremely difficult is uh, all the labyrinths, the mapless labyrinths you have to go through, and it's a pain in the fucking ass. I have notes on my iPad telling me directions to go at every fork you come to. So. Thankfully, there was a walkthrough online that I could refer to. <coughs> Gotta love that eagle sound effect every time you figure out a puzzle. Look at those keys from the future. They look fucking cool. So, yeah, this game has kind of a slow start. I'm going to apologize for that. It might be a bit boring. And that's kind of why, like, with games like this, when I do game times on or whatever, I like to load up further parts further in the, uh, the game. You know, where stuff's more interesting. Uh, and honestly, the part I'm going to load up is, like, right at the end of the game. There's just a bunch of labyrinths and aliens and you've got to go through. It's a goddamn nightmare, but it leads up to one of the coolest parts in the game, in my opinion. And uh, I, I don't think, like, uh, I don't know, I might try and show the show the end credits, but I mean, like, this game is a lot of CGI. It's, I think that this first part here is going to take me, like, 40 minutes. Alright, so... We need to go to the stair room, which is just straight down from the locker room. Alright, okay, we need to go to... Oh, phew. I thought I examined that dumb lock. It takes her fucking forever. 
Alright, use this on here. <coughs> so, uh, yes, this, this game is very much alien. So, this game is pretty... It is it's very nerve-wracking. And it, overall, it's kind of like D, where the atmosphere is already pretty... It's pretty spooky. I'm sure it's being ruined by all the noises in my house right now. If you can even hear them, I'm not sure. Or if you hear water running, I'm sure it's being picked up. But, uh, yeah. This game's atmosphere is fucking great. Uh, shoot, I was gonna say something. But I cannot remember. Alright, well, now we're in the basement. <coughs> the very alien esque labyrinths. Alright, we need to go to the left here so we can go to the power room. One thing I think that works kind of well for this game is like the draw distance it has. It's. It's very dark. The draw distance is very dark and it's also not too far. But it kind of. It works for this type of game. Alright, here's the first puzzle. Boop, boop, and boop, boop. Yep, so those first three. One, sorry, one, four, and five. Or are those six buttons? I don't know. There's five, okay. So the power is on. Alright, now we need to go to the storeroom. We were in the stair room, but now we need to go to the storeroom. So yeah, oh goodness. I really hope this doesn't turn out to be super duper boring. But I'm already kind of running out of things to talk about. But yeah, I, I got this game the other day in the mail, and uh, the guy I bought it from said it was going to come in a generic DVD case. Uh, he lied. I got it in a, uh, a little plastic slip, all four discs in this little plastic slip thing. Now, at least they were in that, but still, it said generic DVD case, so I figured, oh, he's at least, you know, going to the store, or he's got a... <laughs> a four disc DVD case is gonna put it in perfect. I can just print out the little uh, the cover in the back and whatever and slip it in there. Nope, that's not what's going on here. But yeah, and this this did or this game lasts uh, four discs. Well, three discs because uh, the first disc has a, a training mode where you can learn to shoot the aliens or you can practice shooting aliens, and it holds the uh, the opening the opening cutscene. Yeah, the opening cutscene I didn't show, but uh, yeah, this, this game, it's, uh, I already, already said, yeah, it's already like, maybe like three hours, not too bad if you know where to go, which is usually not the case with this game with all the labyrinths. Alright, the storeroom, <coughs> right, I need to go, not all the way up, but to the first door on my left. No, I'm sorry, that's not the first door on the left. Oh, maybe I was right. Yeah, okay, yeah. First door on the left. I was thinking it was the elevator. But no, that would be the elevator over there with the alien in front of it that we cannot get past until we get a gun. Which is kind of what we're on our way to do. Uh, I believe I need to go this way. In this room. Yep. Yeah, I love the door sound effects. I love all the sound effects in this game. They're very futuristic and very just appropriate. They're well done. All 
I guess uh, what we need, the only thing we need done in the storeroom here, go to this computer. And. Fucking <coughs> wait for it to load like an actual computer. Wait a minute, this is the future. This is the way, way future. Loading time shouldn't exist. Oh well, this is the Sega Saturn, so of course load times exist. Uh, we don't need a video phone, nobody. We need to go to the info. We need to dig up some info. Alright, what we need to do is go to the lock option. Go to the winter tower and turn off all locks. All right, yeah, and you have the you have the map option up there, which I urge you to use, especially because it has a map of the basement, which we will be getting to here. And yeah, right now. All right, so. To get into real shit. We've got to go down to the basement and we may encounter aliens. Alright, so uh yeah, I was mentioned I picked this game up. And uh yeah, I got it in the mail and one of my friends was over. A friend of mine who actually really likes video games, who's unfortunately going back to college very soon. So I I think actually in the next two or three days, so I will not have him on on the show, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, and we were playing, and like when when we got to this, you know, these this first aliens, and that piano key starts playing, it gets really tense. Like you're just like, oh shit, it's it's right there. Oh gosh, where is it? I don't know what to do. So he's trying to tell me directions, you know, like, oh, to go left. I'm like, oh, I don't know what to do. The alien's near. I don't know. So we are just lost in this in the basement. We are just terrified. And then you're eventually you're just like, wait a minute, this really isn't all that scary. It's not scary, but it's really nerve-wracking because, you know, just just one of those uh One of those aliens can kill you immediately. Gee, I will uh, be right back. All right, I'm uh, back. Sorry about that. I realized that. Uh, just remember the other day I changed the uh, the video quality on my on my phone. So uh, if this part of the video looks worse, I apologize. But like I don't want to use up all of my uh, my space. So yeah, I'm still in the same spot, I'm trying to go down, down to that spooky basement where the ghosts are and aliens, no spooks. Yeah, it really sucks for Parker who's got uh, a room in the maze-like basement. Alright, what we need to do here is uh save yes and every time you save you've got to see this cutscene which is really annoying it's telling me to have a happy new year all right let's record let's record go through them doors because yeah you cannot save in uh in any of the parts where you're controlling Laura freely. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, you can't control Laura in these parts. Uh, the shoulder buttons just make you look left and right. B button makes you run. Alright, we are heading this way. Heading into the den of aliens. It's where real 
So the enemy zero gets real. Shit gets real. What happened? Oh! As I turned myself around and left. <laughs> Goodness gracious, I don't know if you heard that, <laughs> but that was my cat meowing, and it just scared the shit out of me, because <laughs> when he meows, he doesn't sound like a cat, he sounds like a fucking monster, <laughs> so we, we got for real spooks here, All right, I sort of know my way to Parker's room, thank goodness, oh goodness, yeah, I, I was, I am awful. <laughs> He's trying to, he's trying to steal the, the starlight of my video. But yeah, I was, I was home alone one time. My parents were up in DC and our poor friend Parker. Fun fact, Parker is actually, uh, was uh, one of the names of the characters in uh, Alien. He was uh, played by Yafit Kodo. But uh, yeah, um, I was alone, uh, home alone one time, my parents were up to D.C., and my cat Waffle, he, I guess, he's a really fucking stealthy cat. We don't have a collar on him, or at least we have a collar on him, but no bell, and, um, when, uh, sometimes his meow will, like, crack a little bit. So he meowed this one time, and it's and it sounded like a demonic, devilish baby, like, wah, 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 wah. and it scared the shit out of me. Like my heart was fucking racing. I didn't know what it was, and then I saw this cat. I'm like, oh my god, it's you. <laughs> But uh, yeah, let's go through uh, Parker's drawers here. Nothing here. What about uh, this one? Ah, that looks like it could be Kimberly's access code. Alright, that's what we need. Alright, yeah, now we got a video phone, Kimberly. 0326. Huh. <coughs> Yeah, Parker's got pinups on his wall. Although, although he was supposed to be married to a... Uh, Kimberly says that she's... She was his husband. So, like, Parker, you shouldn't, you shouldn't have pinups on your wall. Unless Kimberly's totally cool with that. Alright, so let's give Kimberly a call. Let's see how she's doing. Zero, three, two, six. Enter. All right, so. Oh, good, she's still alive. I didn't catch that. What was that? Uh-oh. All right, let's, uh, let's head out. We can head back upstairs. And we need to head to uh, Marcus's room. Yeah, look at look. I can't. I honestly can't tell uh, how well this is going to show up in the video. But yeah, you can totally see those those pinups on the wall right there. Yeah, we need to we need to get out this basement. I'm going to save again right here. Save often. Play, play this game on beginner, because <clears throat> saving and loading uh, takes more on, like, easy and normal, and if you unlock hard mode, yeah, gets fucking worse, but play this shit on easy. I mean, I'm sorry, on beginner. 
Honestly, it just makes this game a little bit more bearable. Plus, less aliens to kill you, more charges for your gun. I mean, yeah, this game could be fucking unrelenting if you play on other difficulties. Alright, this is where I need to use my map. Especially because this fucking alien is still alive. Alright, I'm already lost. Already lost. Front of the room. Oh, thank goodness. Whew. All right, so that went well. Let's get the fuck out of here. All right. Alright. No idea how long we've been playing. I'm hoping I won't be long. Actually, yeah, no, no. I'm already actually pretty close to the part I wanted to just kind of get to and stop. So yeah, uh, at the end of the game, you find out if Laura just went up this elevator like one more time, she would have been at the escape pod and would have been able to leave. But uh, for some reason, she doesn't do that. Because you have to come back here and go to Parker's room and see a cutscene happen. And you're just like, really? I could have just gone up? I could have skipped all this bullshit? But then, you know, I guess it wouldn't have been much of a game. Speed runs would have been fucking crazy. Alright, so Marcus's room. Alright, I can take my first the first door on the left here. Yeah, in the Japanese uh, game, uh, I believe Marcus was Mercus. M-E-R-C-U-S. Mercus. Which is a really fucking odd name. Alright, yeah, you you want you want that to happen. Oh, spooks! Oh. What I miss? That was stressful. So, uh, yeah, let's go check on our buddy Marcus. Marcus. Think he's up this way? Uh, yeah, not not looking good right now. Head in. Oh no! Looks like Marcus got ahead of himself. Alright, so this this part is kind of odd and kind of dumb. And for some reason to me, it's kind of funny. So we get over here. After seeing our poor buddy Marcus, headless, headless corpse, it's a decapitated corpse. So let's examine this door. Oh no, our DNA is not good enough. So what are we going to use? Yeah, so what are you going to do? Use Marcus's hand? Oh, no, 
you son of a bitch. <laughs> Alright, come on. <laughs> Hey buddy, can you lend me a hand? Yes, we take two of his fingers. We take two, we take his fingers. God, he's got some gross ass looking fingernails. Ugh. <laughs> I don't want to touch him. <laughs> So yeah, that's what you gotta do. Please don't be long, though I may be asleep. That I guess I can, I guess uh, whenever I play uh, warp games, I just got the Beatles on the mind. All right, so let's go into our inventory. Yes. Yes! <laughs> Video games are dumb. Stuff like this. You know what the worst part is? We keep his two fingers for the rest of the game. Like we're actually going to use them again. Boop. Oh, video games are dumb. So yeah, I guess just kind of recently, I've, or I guess over this summer, I've been, or I guess maybe the, this past year, I've really been getting into spooky video games. Like this, D, uh, Clock Tower, I'm going to do, I'm going to play through that whole entire game around uh, Christmas, I mean Halloween. Do a whole game time on that, not sure whether I'm going to have a friend over with me or not. Yeah, because I, I have a, I have a re repo cart of a clock tower for the uh, Super Nintendo. Got that for Christmas last year. That's a fucking great game. I really want to get Resident Evil for uh, the Saturn. Or the PlayStation, I guess. But yeah, yeah we got a gun. That chunky-ass gun. And, uh, yeah, we're just gonna leave. But, uh, first, first we, we, we gotta save, because we gotta go kill an alien. And I am not confident in myself. Not confident at all. I know, I know, I must believe in myself, so I can shoot spooky aliens, and beat video games, and get money. But I have my doubts. So yes, uh, we, we need to go to the elevator here, but first, all about them saves. All about them saves. Yeah, I have no idea how long I've been playing now. I'll do this much faster than I did earlier, I was just kind of practicing. Because I was like, alright, yeah, I want to get familiar with this first part of the, part of the enemy zero so I can uh, at least get, get to the certain point. Um, Marxism, yeah. Alright, yeah. This is where we want to go. This thing's got charged, too. So I can see the cool death scene, which you'll probably see many more times. Because when I load up that save, uh, it's it's towards the end of the game, and it's just like six floors of labyrinths. 
I was talking about, yeah, me being into spooky games and stuff. Well, I am playing this spooky game how it's supposed to, how it's meant to be. Playing in the fucking dark. And I gotta say, it does make it a hell of a lot spookier. Waiting for 34 minutes, huh? Voice record number 013. Laura Lewis. Marcus is dead. Killed by a similar formless organism that attacked Parker. I have positively identified his corpse. There appears to be an as-yet unspecified number of these organisms. Yeah, that is, uh, that is Jill Kunif of Luscious Jackson. They, uh, band from the 90s. Not exactly for me, but, uh, they had, uh, one song, it's called Naked Eye. Uh, it goes like, With my naked eye saw all the falling rain, or something. Something like that. Because when I, when I got the game, I, <coughs> I looked him up and I, I, I was like, oh yeah, I know this song. And yeah, I mean, it's all right. It's not, not for me, but that's only one of their songs. All right. Let's go in here and not get killed by aliens. Yes! So that, that is kind of what they look like, if you saw that. They're very kind of squid and beetle, beetle-like. Maybe that's why I got the beetles on the mind. But uh, yeah, that is uh, sort of what they look like. Let's see if you're again. Because we're about to go into a cutscene where I can die. And I'd rather not kill that alien again. So yeah, like when I was playing through this game, uh, I think I, I killed six or seven aliens in the whole game. Pro probably a little bit more. Maybe, maybe, maybe more like... Eight to ten aliens, but again, it wasn't that many. I avoided a lot of them. Plus, I'm playing on beginner where there's not that many aliens, anyways. So yeah, let's go. Let's go see this. Uh, let's go ride the elevator. Ride the lightning. Lord, Flora. Laura doesn't give a shit. She's going to whatever floor she can get to, which is kind of ironic because I think she left like the safest floor. There's just that one alien guarding the, the shit. The elevator. Also, oh, spooks. Angry alien. Just an angry alien. Ah, uh, he's thinking us a legit reason why we lose our gun. Alright, so be ready to go. Hold down that B button and run to the left. And then when you get to the store, Laura, see, can you hear me? see enough and you'll climb into the air ducts. I'm watching you through the surveillance camera. <laughs> straight, straight out of Alien. I now have to go to my notes and... Laura, climb faster. Yes, now we are in air ducts. And, like, if it wasn't bad enough, we were on a claustrophobic ship. You're in an even worse place, the air ducts. But that is always, like, really fucking Laura, cool. right now you're in between the fourth and fifth level. I'm on the fifth level. You can get here through the emergency hatch. Watch out. The hatch is located on the other side of the tower. So I sort of know my way around this place. I believe this is George's computer room. 
It is. Where we get another gun <clears throat> and stuff. But uh, you know, I'm I'm gonna call it. That elevator scene was really uh, the scene I wanted to play up to before I load up. So that's what I'm gonna do right uh, right after this, I guess. And then it'll basically just be like an endurance endurance run of me dodging aliens and going down corridors, which may or may not be really boring for you all. I will be right back. Alright, uh, I am back. And, uh, yep, I've loaded up the save. How's that? Hopefully that's the right one, actually. <clears throat> yes, it is. Alright, so... This is the harsh part of the game. Oh! Yeah, what you just heard there. There's another type of enemy that's very deadly. <clears throat> Alright, I'm gonna have to shoot an enemy here, I'm pretty sure. people. Yeah, she's hear that wah wah sound after their after the aliens scream. That's that's when you know you gotta shoot them. That's cause they got they they move extremely slow. They don't move that fast. And they've gotta be like point blank before you can, like, shoot them. So I don't know how many times you're going to see me die and do this, but I really want to get to this one very cool part. And it's at the end of this marathon segment. I know the first floor, and I know the second floor. Other than that, I do not. Straight, straight. Left, straight, straight. Yeah, in, in my notes, I have a direction for every time I come to a fork in the road. And, uh, it does well, it gets me through. Yeah, dodge him. All right. All right, I don't know this floor so well. Left, straight, left, straight, straight, left. Oh, thank goodness. Sorry, I'm not talking much. I'm trying to concentrate. Woo! Alright, I know what to do on this floor. This floor is just go straight, basically. Very cool floor. Very alien. It's been hived. All right. 
bank. Actually, yeah, it, it looks like there's snot and boogers everywhere. Very, very cool. Nice design touch. Alright, this is where it's going to be tough. I've done very well right now. Alright, so, the small editor for the uh, is right in the big room. I know I need to go straight into the air duct. Down this hall. Let's see. Left into the air duct in the next room. Okay. Shit. Notes. All right, I need to go left. Alright, I think this is the one. My heart is like pounding right now. Yes. Thank goodness. Alright. This is the coolest part of the game. To me. <clears throat> what is it? Yes. Yes. Look at how cool that is. A big alien throbbing heart. Big throbbing alien heart. I'm not sure how close you can get to it. Yes! That is by far the coolest part of the game to me. Whew. So that might not have seemed nerve-wracking, but it really was. And it, oh no. What is that? Who could it be? Or what could it be? It's a better question. So, uh, with this cutscene, uh, there might be some spoilers. So, if you really want to experience this game for yourself, I suggest don't watch on any further. Laura! It's Kimberly! You're still alive! So you've been warned. So you found out. I'm one of the military personnel who commissioned George's company to carry out this plan. To capture and transport the enemy monsters back to Earth for utilization as biological weapons. You mean like alien? Parker was also one of us. I never meant to deceive you. When Parker and I got married, you were as happy as if you were the one getting married. I thank you for that. You've always been such a good friend. 
even though I never say anything. If you feel the same way, maybe you can believe what I'm saying. You know, Lord, you were in love with David, weren't you? Isn't that proof enough that you actually are human? You might not understand now, but someday, I'm sure you'll realize how much he loved you. And that day will be your start as a human. I'm not going. The only place for me is with Parker. Okay, see ya. I know you can understand. Here. This is David's memory chip. Take it back with you. I gotta go. Parker's waiting. Hurry! Get out of here! So yeah, in case you don't know what's going on, what you said is you're not human. You and your boyfriend David are uh, were androids. You just didn't know George programmed memories into you and stuff like that. So oh goodness. So I need to go straight to this air duct. Straight again after this. There's the next fork in the road. Go straight into the air duct again. Left. I gotta go back into the basement and stuff like that, and that's gonna take a long time. I'm not sure I want to do that. Oh yeah, I can save at this point. So uh, let me do that very much. Yeah, because that that whole marathon section you cannot save in, until you get to this point. So what a nightmare. So maybe, maybe I'll guess and try and uh, see roll credits. I just know this is going to be a long fucking video if that's the case. Yep, so down at this point in the game, I was down to 80 saves. I had saved uh, 20 times. Sorry, 19 times, because you start out with 99 battery. So what you actually need to do here, turn around and get back on that elevator, because you're not on the right floor. And what I need to do is bring up the photo of the basement again. All right. So yes, uh, I, I've, I've pretty much spoiled the whole game for you. Well, if you've seen Alien, you've seen the game. This game is, is, is rather fun, I guess. It's not for everyone. It's not for everybody's taste. I think for a survival horror enthusiast and people who enjoyed, uh, the, well, uh, definitely 
<laughs> find find joy to be had in this game. Alright. Shrinking through a familiar place. by aliens. That is always number one priority. Right up here. All right. All right, let's see. Let's see what's up with Kimberly here. No, Kimberly, why? Why must you, why must you have done this? I guess she just couldn't live without him. Yeah. Yes, one thing this game does very well is show the emotions of Laura, even though she is a robot. She may not say anything, she just screams and cries. And she does a really pretty good job. The voice acting in this game is pretty, pretty decent. Poor Laura. She's the only one left alive. Come on, feel the noise. Yep, there's Kimberly. She's dead. We've already established that. She has a nose ring. Fascinating. Alright. This is going to be a long fucking video. <laughs> yes, we get to read through, uh, through this. You can pause and read this if you would like. Kind of entertaining. Actually, I doubt you'll be able to uh, read this in probably too shitty of a quality. But yeah, some of that might not make sense. Maybe or, Kimberly kind of talks about like. Her and Parker, uh, uh, actually after that vent scene earlier, I was in, you get through that, you meet up with her, and she talks about Parker a little bit. <coughs> Let's see, yep, place self-destructing. Oh, shit. I just talked to myself. Oh, no, thank goodness. I can save. Because, uh, you know, I need to do that. I need to do that. Just in case. Because this is the last time you can save in the game. I believe. Actually, no, that's not true. Yeah, actually, yeah, no, I'll save uh, one more time after this, I believe. Alright, I got my map ready. Probably not going to use it at all because I'm sure I'll hear spooky aliens and then start running away.
Machine up. Uh, I'm there. Whew. I didn't hear any aliens. Strange. Alright, but uh, I think we're coming up to the last quarter. Corridor. Corridor. But yes, the ship is shaking uncontrollably. Because it is in self-destruct mode. Just like the end of Alien. In Aliens. I'd almost say this is just basically a rip off of the story, but it, it does, it does its own things. <clears throat> Alright, save all my time. Mm. We'll cut all the saving out. There's uh there's one last labyrinth and then it rolls credits. This is a lot this is a lot further into the game I uh I've decided to play than I was gonna. But yeah, you can see right there, five hours and twelve minutes is what I've put into the game on my first playthrough. That was a lot of me sitting around and uh watching walkthroughs uh or watching a walkthrough so I can map out all the directions to go. In these labyrinths. Yeah, so there's a lot of me sitting in rooms where I was safe. And a lot of me uh, wandering around, uh, not knowing what to do at a time, some... At times. So yes, here, we are going to get out of here. Oops, we start running and then... Oh no, your earpiece is dead. How else are we going to find out where the aliens are? Some inappropriate noise. Laura. No, it's David. Can you hear me? It's me, David. <laughs> you're speaking your to robot your boyfriend. Intercom system. Which sounds like a shitty band. Sounds like a shitty J-pop band. Up next, robot boyfriend. Alive again. Oh, number five is I'm alive. I'm alive. <laughs> you can relax. I'm going to save this guy to out of here. Right. Actually, yeah, he makes I this like the easiest part of the game. Didn't I? That you can depend on. Okay. Let's go. He will tell you directions to go. He will tell you when the enemy is near. Please evacuate immediately. This ship will self-destruct in the left. 20 minutes. To the left. It's okay. Go right. That's left. Forward. Forward. The enemy is near. Watch out. Go right. To the left. Go right. The enemy is near. Go right. Go right. It's okay. Take it easy. To the left. If you turn that corner, you're almost there. Okay. Dead. Straight Go shot. Back. Back to our hometown. Yes, it's this way. Open the door and I'll be waiting for you there. 
Yes. All right. Roll credits. Sit back and relax. And let the game be the game. So yeah, I, I hope you have enjoyed this video. It was probably extremely fucking long. But uh, yeah, and this is probably spoiled and ruined Enemy Zero for you. But uh, if you're a true Aliens fan or Alien fan, fan of the series or whatever, fan of horror or sci-fi games, Saturn enthusiast, pick up this game and play it yourself. And if, uh, I'm, if this isn't enough to convince you, go watch the Happy Video Game Nerds review of this game and the uh, complete uh, D trilogy. Blast off. So man, I got a, uh, I got a court date tomorrow for my, uh, to get my hard copy of my license. I held off on getting my permit for, like, a really long time and then when I was eligible to get my driver's license, I held off on that too, so I was pretty late to get my, my, uh, license. So yeah, shit, after this, I might just head to bed. I usually edit these videos the night of, but not, probably not tonight. I might get the videos on my computer and crop them or whatnot, but I don't think I'll dive into editing them. Because I usually like to watch them too before I post them. Look at that face. Yeah. Some serious business face. It was it me or did her chest look humongous right there? Like her whole not like big humongous booze, but like the whole chest looked very boxy. Like a roller coaster. <laughs> Aki is very, very crazy inside, I guess. Here's our ship. Bam! Explosion straight out of Alien, too. It was very colorful. And it made the screen fade to white. And that is the story of our heroine Ripley. I mean, Laura. Well, there's some tasteful nudity. Voice record number 024, Laura Lewis. I have successfully escaped from the spacecraft, the Aki, via the mini spacecraft. And the, uh, the narcissist. Of the seven initial crew members, six. Parker, Marcus, Ronnie, George, Kimberly, and David are confirmed dead. Only one, me, Laura Lewis, Bye. has survived. I'm now entering hypersleep for the voyage back to Earth. Hey, I wonder if 
Amen. Let's stand on that today. Okay, it sounded like he said, I wonder if it's sun on earth today, not sunny. Okay, this part is going to absolutely ruin all of the cutscenes for you in the game, pretty much. But again, if, if you haven't heeded my warning from before of spoilers, then, uh, whatever. Watch this and you can, uh, you can see some of the cool cutscenes and enemy zero. See, I think all the death scenes. <coughs> Even shit we just saw no more than, like, two minutes ago. I think I know why Kimberly liked Laura so much. She was a really good listener. <laughs> I think Kimberly was trying to tell Laura to stay frosty. There's your boyfriend, David. So yeah, the music in this game is pretty good. It's uh, done by Michael Nyman. He's like a, an award-winning, uh, uh, I guess, score, like, movie. He's done, he did the music to the 1993 movie, The Piano, something like that. And uh, he scored this video game. Here's your boyfriend, David, as he is uh, dying and as he's found out he's an android with his one green eye. I thought that was a cool, nice touch. But yeah, uh, ooh, that was you getting tentacle raped in the mouth by an alien. That's George. Uh, that's George dying. That's you showing that alien motherfucker who's boss. That's, uh, you, cause when that Tentacle raped you in the mouth, you got an alien plant inside your neck. So instead of chest buster, busters, we have neck busters. That's David's helmet, the most helpful thing in the game, because a gun falls out of it and it is infinite char infinitely charged gun. Yep, we already saw this. I already saw that too. Kimberly's tragic fate. Remember, kids, suicide is not is not an option. That's not a joke. I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> and in case you missed it the first time. See Laura's crazy looking face and crazy eyes, and you can see the ship explode again. Ugh. So yes, that is a uh, that is enemy zero. There is one last voice clip after this that I'm not gonna show because this is already in a very long video and it's just Laura saying, "I have com or uh, I'm here to confirm that I can see the blue skies of Earth." And the game ends. So that is enemy zero. I mean that's a pretty damn good amount of it. I think that's pretty much all of disc one and all of disc three I just showed you. So. Yeah, uh, hell of a game. Hell of a game. For for the Saturn, Saturn exclusive, although... Actually, no, I made it to the PC. But, uh... 
Yeah. Play this fucking game. It's great. Uh, play D. Uh, I have yet to play D2. I don't own a Dreamcast. I might pick it up someday. But yes, uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, check out my band, check out my reviews, check out my other game times. Do whatever. Uh, thanks for watching. See ya.